the silence sing sorry across this land to the stolen generations i say the following as prime minister of australia i am sorry on behalf of the government of australia i am sorry on behalf of the parliament of australia i am sorry and i offer you this apology without qualification we formally offer an apology we say sorry to those aboriginal people forcibly removed from their families through the first seven decades of the 20th century we apologize especially for the removal of aboriginal and torres strait islander children from their families their communities and their country for the pain suffering and hurt of these stolen generations their descendants and for their families left behind we say sorry to the mothers and the fathers the brothers and the sisters for the breaking up of families and communities we say sorry and for the indignity and degradation thus inflicted on a proud people and a proud culture we say sorry students about this event, there are 
are a few things that need to be taken into consideration before commencing this topic. Firstly, we need to learn about the student's background and history. We as teachers need to be sensitive to the fact that this is a very confronting topic and has potential to evoke emotions in students, whether they and their families have been affected personally or not. Some of the reasons for understanding the student's background could be that they themselves are of Aboriginal heritage and most likely could have someone who has been affected by this event. There could also be some students who could have parents or grandparents affected by immigration. And another reason is that they or someone they know could have been affected by Department of Family Services issues and the like. So you can see why we need to gain an understanding of the student's background and why we need to be sensitive to this. Also, when I teach a topic, I like to cater for all the various ways that students learn and retain their information. When I teach them a topic, I would try to teach the topic through these different formats, such as reading the information, writing, visual aids such as photos and short movies, listening and active involvement. And then I always like to add in some creativity, usually through the art, to create some fun learning. In bringing this topic to the classroom, I would use many different resources to introduce it. I would very briefly talk about the colonisation, but mainly focus on the taking of the children. The internet has boundless amounts of information for discovery, such as short videos on YouTube that are documentaries and personal encounters. There is many images available in regards to this topic, many of which I have used in this presentation. There are fact sheets and organisations that are dedicated to the stolen generation. Many of these sites have products available for purchase or even free download to aid the teaching of this. Also, the movie Rabbit Proof Fence, as seen on the bottom right of the screen, could be watched in class or recommended for students to view at home, which can also help the students to learn about this topic. The Australian Human Rights Commission have created an education module solely dedicated to the education of this topic and is free. It also has many other useful information on it. I have downloaded and gained access to many of these resources, which I feel is helpful for the students to have a wide variety of resources to access to help them gain understanding. There are also many resources to educate and learn about the apology as well. Later in this presentation, I will briefly discuss how these materials can be used to aid and extend the student's learning. Then, I would like to extend on this topic by focusing on the Aboriginal culture itself, looking at bush foods, hunting, gathering, their art, their storytelling, and many other aspects which can be very interesting in gaining an insight into the Aboriginal people. I will take the students on a journey of learning and discovery and then once the students have gained a full understanding of the event, I would then allow them to extend the journey into further exploration. For example, as you see on this slide, the first Aboriginal member of the Parliament. So the students could maybe explore the politics and the implications of this topic. On the slide also, there are some Aboriginal books about culture and their stories. Maybe the students could investigate the Aborigine culture more deeply and gain a better insight into Aborigines' identity. There's a picture of what appears to be Aborigine people looking at a boat. So maybe if the students might want to try and find out if these invasions have happened in other countries. Or maybe even the students could focus on reconciliation and where do they go from here and what do they do themselves to actively encourage this? Possibly the students and myself could make all of these discoveries together. However, throughout these discoveries, I would also encourage the students to reflect on their own identities and Aboriginals' identities and how it has affected them. And I would point out the differences and dominance examples throughout this self-learning process.
Because I am aiming this learning at high school students, there are a few ways in which I could extend this into diversity and difference. For starters, I could ask many of the students if they would like to share any parts of their culture with the other students, such as games, cultures, festivals, stories, etc. and emphasis appreciation of these differences. There is a wide variety of books and short stories about culture. I would also help the students find their place in the classroom and the communities and their identities through some simple activities such as an Australian map with all the students' faces collaged on it. I would create a large puzzle board and give each student a puzzle piece to take away and create some something that represents themselves and their lives. And then we could put this puzzle together to represent our differences united. This is another activity that I would do with the students to help them become critical thinkers. The pictures are a usual general representation of Australia, such as the typical barbecue, Vegemite, people in swimmers, the outback, cricket, the beach, the kangaroo, the Sydney Opera House. These things are what usually people think of to represent Australia. Then I would show the students these pictures, which are a little more controversial, such as the hijab worn by these ladies of the Australian flag. And then there are two different types of Australian flag representatives. Then there's pictures of multicultural families and other representations of Australia. I would use these photos and pictures to spark discussion or even debate amongst the students to see where it leads. I would also like to a encourage the students to be actively involved in trying to create understanding of difference and encourage the students to create a reconciliation event. If you go onto the reconciliation website, it gives you details on how you can create an event and I would like the students to make this event happen within the school. Getting the students involved in this reconcil reconciliation event will encourage them to take action and spread the word. The students can recognise that they can be heard and that they can make a difference. This, this can also work as a team building exercise and encouraging them to support each other. They can bring in their own cultural ideas and they are gaining exposure and appreciation for other, other people's cultures and differences which is reducing the gap and breaking down the marginalisations.